I do, I do. So I think Bitcoin still has another leg lower to twelve to thirteen thousand. I think the stock market likely by end of year or early twenty twenty three will tag the March um, twenty twenty well the highs just before the March twenty twenty COVID collapse. So you're talking about the S and P downside to like thirty four hundred or so. Warm. The key for gold's outperformance is going to be when you hear the Fed pivot. The Fed pivot is going to be key because inflation is not going to be down to 2% or under, and it's going to tell you that the Fed is now more worried about the economy than about inflation. Right, but a pivot towards what? Not QE. No, no, definitely not QE, right? But it's just that idea. So the market is trying to price in how much more hikes they're going to do in terms of interest rates, how much tighter the, the dollar is going to be, the supply of the dollar. And what the market wants to see is it start to curl down, where instead of a 75 basis point hike after this mm -hmm. next meeting, maybe they do 50 or 25, or maybe they go on hold. And what that's going to assume, that the investing public is going to assume that that means they're going to go to zero. And then eventually when the economy gets in to a bad recession, they're going to start going back to quantitative easing again down the line. Now, it's not for a long, right. long time, but you absolutely will see that again when the economy starts to really tank. Before we move on to the, to the other cryptos, just sticking to the Fed a second, you said the bond markets, though, are calling the Fed's bluff. What do you mean by that? Yeah, so a lot of this has to do with the dollar, right? So, so when you see the dollar continuing to stay at 20 plus year highs, and it continues to grind up, it just kills all risk assets. And you can actually watch on an intraday basis how every uptick in the dollar, you'll see the, the opposite occurring in the Bitcoin chart or in the stock charts of the S&P as well. So a lot has to do with the dollar. We have to keep an eye on rates. Remember, as interest rates rise, there are going to be a certain amount of investors that say, hey, listen, I could get kind of a risk-free return of 5% or 4%. Why am I risking my money in Bitcoin or in the stock market when I could lose 20 or 30 percent? So there's this give and take going on in the market as the market tries to gauge what the heck the Federal Reserve is going to do in this coming meeting. Are they going to raise 75? Is it going to be 50? Is it going to be 100? And again, the market is just trying to figure out the level. Yeah, so you're right on that. So we have we have Bitcoin that flushed early today with the stock market. The stock market was down sharply this morning. It reversed um, because the dollar began to pull back. And amazingly, I mean, gold was down this morning and then gold reversed basically flat on the day as the dollar came in. And you can see Bitcoin rallying up as well. So the key for me is continuing to watch this 19,500 level on a daily closing basis. The reason why that's such an important level to me is if you go all the way back to the 2017 high, that is the high pivot. And that's kind of the level we've been dancing around for a long, long time. So as long as we kind of hover around that level, there's a small chance that Bitcoin can get some sort of bid if the dollar comes in, if the Fed gives some sort of dovish speak on Wednesday that maybe shows a pivot coming for interest rates. So, so you know, for, for the last year plus, I've been really a proponent of regulation. And the reason I am is, is that as much as we like the deregulation and, and, and kind of this independent currency type thing, if you ever expect big money to come in, and I'm talking about pension funds with trillions of dollars, I mean, just them putting 1% of their assets in Bitcoin would be massively positive for the price of Bitcoin. So I'm coming from the, the investor standpoint where I want to see the price go up. And the only way you're going to get that is if you get a framework of regulation and people actually know the rules, right? So one of the things in the stock market that I've learned over the years of trading is that the market doesn't necessarily care if it's a positive or a negative. They just don't like not knowing, right? They don't like that, that ability to not figure out what the rules are. So by getting regulation out there, you create a framework where these institutions can say, okay, now we can play in this, in this field. We can play ball because we know the rules and we feel comfortable investing with our fiduciary responsibility, other people's money. So I welcome you know, regulation. I think it's needed. You saw over the last like six months, bankruptcies and shady Absolutely. activities and all this. And investors honestly, honestly are scared of crypto in many, many situations. So I think you have to get this regulation. 
Yeah, so so I think the key is to understand that that for me at least, I think that a digital dollar doesn't really solve the problem of what Bitcoin's solving and that that you have this stated 21 million run, that's the essence of it, so it can't be printed like the digital dollar. In fact, you could argue that the digital dollar can be printed even easier. And I understand what you're saying where, you know, will the government say, "Oh, we don't want any competition?" But I I again, you know, I think you have to look at it and say if I was a if I was a politician, I would be looking at Bitcoin and saying, you know what, it's more of a gold. Why? So they're not going to ban gold then, but they're going to ban Bitcoin. But to me, it's a digitalized gold, so I don't see that being a conflict. And I think the key is Ethereum and some of these other altcoins. You're going to start to see regulation that lays a firm framework where they're going to be classified as securities. We know Gary Gensler has said that. And therefore, they're going to have reporting rules. There's going to be strict rules to report. But I think they're going to be treated much more like equities than, than kind of currencies. And so I think you have Bitcoin as the digital gold. And then you have a lot of these other cryptocurrencies that will have to report and be treated much more like equities. All right. So, so here it is. And what you could see is basically they're following almost in tune with each other. And I think this is so remarkable because, you know, gold, we've grown up, you know, for the past 20, 40, 60 years, that gold was a safety play when things got scary in risk assets. But we can clearly see that's not the case here with gold and the S&P both dipping as Bitcoin has also dipped. And again, the charts are very, very similar in terms of their price action. And again, the key here is understanding that it's the dollar that is causing the movement in both gold as well as as well as risk assets like the stock market and, and cryptocurrency. Yeah, so so I think gold has been doing amazingly well. Number one, if any investor out there was fully in gold, they would be thrilled this year, right? I mean, they would be so happy to only be down 5% or so on the year. And the other thing to remember is the gold chart is only down 5, give or take a percent. But the dollar has gone up 15% on the year. So if someone told me that the dollar was going to rise 15%, yeah. I would say, oh, well, gold probably should be down 15% on the year at right. least. And the fact is it's only down 5%, which shows to me it's relatively outperforming what it should be doing. And it tells me to also that you likely are having smart money accumulating, which is why it's not down as much. So I continue to be a huge bull on gold. I think, again, you know, people love to hate on gold, but in, in real, reality, it's performed well. I mean, take a look at the euro chart, the gold euro chart or the gold yen chart. It's it's an awesome. If you were in those, those assets via those currencies, you'd be loving gold even more this year. But I think, again, the fact that gold is holding up as well as it is with such a strong dollar is a testament that it's getting ready for a big bull run. Okay. So... Uh yeah, so, so according to my calculations and probabilities on the charts, the dollar's getting ready for a reversal. So again, that would coincide with the potential of a pivot coming up here. And again, I don't want anyone to misconstrue what I'm saying. They're still going to raise 75 basis points on Wednesday. It's about what the commentary is. That's what the mar what's going to move the markets on Wednesday is what Jerome Powell says in his press conference. So if he even opens the door to kind of a pivot, yeah. the market is going to rejoice. The dollar is going to fall. Fall. And I do think that you have the midterms coming up and the Fed likely will sit on the sidelines through the midterms and then reevaluate. I agree with that. Um, just uh, uh no, not a concern for me at all. And mainly because there's too many jobs that have been layered on the, the crypto side of things with the blockchain and everything else. And there's too many big investors even involved in Bitcoin already where I just do not see that happening. So I think, if anything, it's kind of a scare tactic. They're trying to push people to think, oh my goodness, this could happen. And then when they do introduce some stringent regulations, it won't seem so bad. So again, for me, it's, it's a matter of, you know, Biden realizes, and by the way, there's a lot of politics politicians out there that do invest in Bitcoin and they're big fans of it. These are the politicians that know that they're running up the, the debt. They're, they know the, the future of the dollar and they're big fans of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So they're not going to be a, they're not going to be looking to ban it. And I think you're going to see that the regulation, whether it's a positive or a neutral or a negative, it's still going to allow for the existence of crypto just with some rules to follow.